Here I am to worship, here I am to 
waking up knowing there's a reason all my dreams come alive life is for living with you i made my decision you lift me up fill my eyes with wonder for every young in your love this freedom's untainted Am I living it? What? Do I live in it? Yeah. So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith there in the life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a live with the death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living. Stop Baptist Church. It's great that you're able to join with us. Welcome to the younger members of the church family. Hopefully your parents have survived the school holidays in one piece. We also hope that you're in a warm place on this winter's morning as we worship together. And we can focus our minds and attention on the Lord and Saviour and give Him the honour and praise. As a community of this time, we can acknowledge and proclaim what God has done through Jesus Christ through our songs of praise, our prayer, and the reading of the word. Today, Pastor Jeff Pegler will continue the Love Language series, looking at quality time, touch, and gifts. Not only does he look at how these can enhance our close unit relationships, but also how the love languages can be applied in our relationships with God. Jeff will also be leading us in communion, so hopefully you have arranged a cup and some bread later in the service. David in Psalm 103 focuses our attention on God's great love and highlights the Lord's forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness will come to a disobedient people but it will only come because of God's compassion. Praise the Lord my soul, my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. 
who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sin deserves or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Let us pray together, shall we? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come to praise you for who you are, for your majesty, your authority, and sovereignty and power. Father, we thank you that you are so ready to forgive us whenever we turn to you and acknowledge your power and our own need. We ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may offer words and songs and lives and witness that bring you praise and glory through Jesus Christ, whose work of grace has set us free. We come to you. Amen. Please join with the music team in worship as we sing our opening songs, Forever, followed by Amazing Grace. After singing, we will have the Kids Connect time. Thank you. 
One, two, three, four. What you doing, sport? I'm counting money, Dad. Dad, what can I buy with this? Um, uh, not much. Why is that? Oh, I wanted to buy Mum a present to show her that I love her. This episode is called Loving Mum. You know, Bluey, giving a present isn't the only way you can show Mum that you love her. Really? Yeah, let me tell you a story. This story is about Mary and Martha and how they showed Jesus that they loved him. Wow, what did they do? Well, Mary showed Jesus that she loved him by spending lots of time with him and listening really well to everything that he said. Martha wanted to show Jesus she loved him by doing lots of nice acts like cooking yummy food. One spent time with Jesus, the other did acts to show that they loved him. That's great. That gives me an idea of how to show Mum I love her. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Mum. Mum, what are you doing? I'm going to the toilet, sweetheart. What do you want? Oh, oh, nothing. Um, um, do you need, do you need help with anything? No, no, I'm fine. I'll be out in a sec, darling. Oh, hang on. Oh, let me, let me help you. I can, I can help you with this. Oh, honey, it's okay. I don't, I don't need that. Out you go, out you go. Thanks. Oh, 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 okay. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Oh. Hey, Mum! What you doing? Ma! Oh, oh, Bluey! Oh, you scared me. Oh, um, I'm having a shower, darling. Can you just wait? Oh, Mum! Mum, can I help? Can I help you? Oh, no, darling, it's okay. I'm fine. Oh, Mum! Mum, I can, I can help. Hey darling, you just wait outside. What's wrong, Bluey? Oh, oh, nothing. Really? You look a little upset to me. Sit in my lap and tell me about it. Well, it's just that I wanted to show Mum that I loved her by spending time with her and helping her, but she didn't seem very happy. Oh, that's not good. Tell me what happened. Well, well, first I went to find Mum and she was on the toilet, so I sat down to be with her. Then I thought I could be really helpful by getting the toilet paper for her. Ah, I see. But she said she didn't need help and she could do it herself. And then she went into the shower and I thought I could help her by getting the shampoo, but I slipped and it went everywhere. She said she could do it. I don't understand, Dad. I was trying so hard to be helpful and to spend lots of time with her, but she didn't like it. Well, Bluey, I think I know what the problem is. You need to do something for Mum that she would really like and spend time with her doing nice things. Oh. Can you think of anything Mum likes doing or would like help with? Uh, well, she's always doing the dishes, so she must love them. Maybe I could do them with her. Haha. <laughs> That's a good idea, Bluey, but Mum doesn't really like doing the dishes. She does them to show us that she loves us. Oh, really? That's like Martha! Mum does, does the dishes because she loves us. Wow, I didn't know that. I have a better idea. How about we do them together and then we can let Mum have a break? Oh, yeah, and maybe I can make Mum her favourite smoothie. That's a wonderful idea. Oh, thanks, Dad. Darling, this looks delicious. This is wonderful. You're welcome, Mum. Mum, can I sit with you? Yeah, certainly, darling. Hop up here. I love you, Bluey. I love you.
一句吗？to Laura, Alicia, Alika and Cooper. Hopefully we've all committed to memory the verses from John 13 and the Dancing Hutton Trio. Next time I'm expecting Craig and Aidan to make cameo appearances. Over recent months many in the church family have practically supported bushfire recovery activities coordinated through the church and there has been support provided with funding received through the Baptist Union of Victoria from the bushfire appeal conducted earlier in the year. In recognition of the continuing need to support the bushfire recovery, the BUV has fully funded a bushfire pastoral care position on a one day per week basis through to March next year, or specified the church. Given Jeff Freiberg's effort in coordinating the church's bushfire recovery response, the BUV strongly endorsed a decision by the church leaders to appoint Jeff to this pastoral care position. Jeff's appointment will enable a continuation of pastoral care support to people recovering from the bushfire. Last week, it was announced a special church meeting will be held on Sunday the 19th of July. That is next Sunday at 1 p.m. for the purpose of considering a recommendation from the Pastoral Search Committee to call a new senior pastor to the church. An email was also sent out last week to the church community and all church members providing further details about the meeting. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, the meeting will need to be held in a different format to that which we would use in normal circumstances. The meeting is to be held as an online meeting with the option available for those who do not have the capacity to join us online forum to attend in person. Please ensure you read the email as everyone who wishes to participate in the meeting will need to register their intention to do so. Should you be uncertain about what's required, please contact Al McAuliffe or Jeff Freiberg or myself as soon as possible as we can assist you. When the pastoral search committee was appointed by the church, its task was to seek a person that God has called to be the senior pastor of the church. The committee has done the task set by the church and will bring a recommendation to the meeting. As the person concerned is currently serving as a pastor at another church, the committee is unable to disclose the name prior to the meeting for confidentiality reasons. That said, the committee has been on a journey of spiritual discernment seeking God's will in respect of the individual for over four months with the support family in prayer throughout this time. At the church meeting, the committee will provide a comprehensive report on the person and why they believe that person should be formally called to be senior pastor here at Benstar Baptist. We will now continue our time of worship with the song, Lord, I Give You My Heart.
you, God. We thank you for the blessings you give us. We pray that you'll bless the offering and use it for your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's Bible reading comes from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 34, and immediately follows the account in Mark of Jesus healing the demon-possessed man. Mark chapter 5, verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, And when he saw Jesus fell at his feet, he pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing that what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with her fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. In a moment, Jeff Peckler is going to lead us in communion. However, before that, we as a church have an opportunity to express our appreciation to Jeff for his term as interim pastor with the church. Thank you. As you're aware, Jeff and Pam Peckler have been with us for a couple of years now, and in the last 20 months, Jeff's been acting as the interim pastor of the church. And... uh, as previously planned, though, his time is actually coming to an end. He's concluding his official ministry to the church and taking a well-earned break. And as a church, we want to express our thanks and appreciation to both of you for ministering to us during this time of transition in the church life. So as part of our appreciation, we'd like to present both of you with some gifts here, uh, which hopefully you can enjoy. Um, let's uh, thank you very much for the time you spent with us in official capacity. And we look forward to you continuing in your being part of our church fellowship in the future as well. Well, thank you, Andrew and Heather, especially for the new leaf special. We'll um, make good use of that. And to you as a church as well, it's been a really interesting and um, and fun couple of years. I remember when we first uh, started to be involved in 2018. Um, church was probably quite a different spot than what it is now. And so as I look back, as we look back as a couple, ministry couple, it's been a privilege to see the way um, church life has changed and you've really got to um, appreciate each other in different ways. And we've really appreciated uh, the chance of ministering to you and with you as well. So we're hiding off into the um, the uh, deep blue yonder for um, uh, a break in July and August. We were going to the Pilbara in Western Australia, but of course that's out. We were then going to go to um, Northern New South Wales, of course that's out. So we might go to Swan Reach just for a change, for a bit of a break, but um, we are having a break as was planned from the start of this year. So thank you for your, um, your commitment to us and your ministry with us. And we'll be back to see you um, as church members once we've had this time away as well. Thank you. And I'll just, uh, I'll just pray for them as they head off. Love and Father, we thank you uh, for Pam and Jeff, and we thank you for all that they have brought to this church uh, at Bansdale. 
We thank you for uh, the modesty, the integrity and the wisdom that both uh, Jeff and Pam have brought, uh, not only to my life, uh, but I know to the lives of many people in the congregation. Uh, we are going to miss them and it's sad, uh, a sad time, but it's also uh, a joyful time for them. Uh, unfortunately, their plans of uh, travel has been put on hold, but we pray uh, that you bless them richly, uh, that you refresh them uh, in this break time and that um, when they can possibly get away, that they get away and have a good time uh, with each other in your creation. Uh, we also look forward to when they can come back um, as um, just fellow um, members of the church. Uh, we look forward to a fellowship with them uh, in the future. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Hey Jeff, I want to say a big thank you for the interest that you've shown in me, Mark, Ruthie and Amos since we arrived in Bairnsdale. You've been a welcoming heart to us and I also just want to thank you for the special role that you've played in my life as you've um, chatted with me in the office and as we've worked together a little and as you've supported my ideas about Kids Hope. Uh, you've been uh, an incredibly uh, wise person to chat to and I've loved um, the times that we've been able to spend together chatting and being challenged to think outside the box. So thank you very much and I just wish you all the best in what's to come for you in 2020. Thanks. Thanks Jeff for all you've done during your time as interim pastor. We've personally really appreciated you and really glad that you and Pam will still be part of the church family. Have a great time away, Jeff and Pam, and we'll look forward to catching up on your back. Thank you, Pam, for helping me out, baby. Bye. Thank you, Jeff, for the, the last two years that you spent with um, Bandstar Baptist Church. It has been awesome, the work you've done. Um, when you first joined the church, we were in a, a tough place. We'd gone through some tough times and your gentle and caring style and approach really brought about a sense of healing and um, renewal in the church. Um, you restored unity and really set the church up for the next chapter, which hopefully will um, start to unfold in, in the, um, the months and years ahead. Um, I love the way you're willing to spend time with people and build those relationships, the way you're such a great listener. Um, from the times at uh, the leadership table, your experience and the many years um, you had in other churches was a great, huge value for us. Um, and the way you brought a, se a sense of a renewed focus on looking to the future. Um, and the way you led healthy discussions around leadership styles and structures. Um, but most of all, the encouragement and the support you offered to each member of the team. Personally, I have valued the support and encouragement you have provided me in my role at the church here. Um, I particularly enjoyed the many times we were able to you know, sit down in the office and workshop different ideas and plans and, and think through different things that we were working on at the time. It was you know, really great to have someone to sort of bounce those ideas off. Um, I really thank you too on behalf of the youth for the way you advocated for the youth, both in our church but what people probably didn't know is the way you also advocated for our youth in the wider community, um, particularly around the um, when we were preparing for the mission trip and you, the way you're advocating out in the community for as part of our fundraising and, and seeking support. Um, when I look back over the last couple of years, um, I, a couple of the highlights that really jump out to me uh, when we had the Linton Allen weekend and we, we worked through that together, that was really fantastic time in the church um, but also I know from the perspective of the youth going on the mission trip was a, a real highlight and you know the support you provided me in the background of preparing that was just awesome. Often Jeff and I would have to deliberate over some very difficult decisions and one of the more, most difficult decisions we would regularly have to make is to decide whether to turn left at the roundabout and head to New Leaf Cafe or turn right and head to Aroma Cafe just some of the tough decisions we often had to make. So Jeff, I, I hope you enjoy your, your break and enjoy hopefully getting away on a bit of a holiday. Thank you so much for all you've done. Um, 
I know I've definitely appreciated it and I know that the wider church community has also appreciated it. So thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey, for being our pastor. We really enjoyed your teaching and your awesome grandpa jokes. We will also miss you at school. Jeff said won't be the same without you. Bye! Bye. Thank you, Jeff and Pam, for your ministry with us at BBC. <laughs> Sue's going to say, and for the healing that, that occurred during that time. Your work with the various groups within the church. Sue wants to say, and Pam, for the busy bee work you've done. For your involvement with Jesus the Game Changer and the challenges it presented to us, Sue's too busy laughing to do anything there. For your encouragement in our Christian walk. God bless and may you enjoy your travels. Now Sue really wants to say something here, and that is, when you are able to go. Your work has been very much appreciated. Ditto! Hello Jeff and Pam. I think the first time we met was when Lynn and I took the bookstore down to the lakes when you were still operating out of the Arm Hall way. It was quite some years ago now, but we thank you for your fellowship and your hospitality and we thank you for helping out here Bansale, we have been greatly blessed and we wish you well for the future. Jeff and Pam, it's been great to have you here. As Doug said, we've known you for some years, but it's been lovely to share playgroup with Pam and to hear Jeff preach. And we just wish you all the best and thank you. Blessings from us. Hiya Jeff, um, sorry to hear you're leaving, but on behalf of the Men's Shed, um, we'd all just like to say thank you very much for your involvement um, with the Shed and uh, your input into uh, many of the things that we did. And uh, we'd just like to say both to you and Pam, good luck for the future and uh, ho hopefully we'll see you around sometime. Thank you. Hi Jeff and Pam. Look, I'd just really like to say how much I've appreciated to you, Jeff, the input you've had, the calmness that you've instilled in uh, the leadership table, around that leadership table, and just what a great uh, influence you've had on our, our church congregation. Uh, mate, I just hope for the, the absolute best for you and, and Pam's future and your, and your break. Have a great one. You've earned it. Thanks. Hey, Jeff and Pam. We just want to say thanks so much for your ministry during your time um, as interim pastor at Bairnsdale Baptist. We've really appreciated um, the love that you've shown, the care that you've shown, the wisdom you've displayed, the way that you've served um, in our church community and how much of a blessing that's been through this time. Thanks heaps. And thank you too for the way you've supported us as a family, both at church and at Eagle Point Primary School. And a, and a special thank you from me for the way you've supported us at Kids Connect and for all that you've done in that. So from all of us, we say a very big thank you. Thank you. Well, friends, it's my privilege to welcome you around this table this morning. The table of the Lord is spread. It is for those who will come and see in the broken bread and the poured out wine the symbols of Jesus' life shed for us on the cross and raised again on the third day. The risen Christ is present amongst his people and it is here that we meet him. It is right that we call to mind the meaning of the supper. It's a remembrance of the sacrifice of Christ for the sins of the world. It's an encounter with the risen Lord a feeding on him in faith, a communion with one another in his body, the church, and a looking forward to the day when he will come again. Therefore, we need to come in faith, in repentance, and to humbly trust in Christ. Let me read to you those words uh, of Paul where he says, For I have received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, 
and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He later on in the meal took the um, cup the same way after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Just going to invite us to um, bow in prayer in this contemplative time where we can be thankful in our hearts. We're then going to just allow you in the quietness of the next three or four minutes to um, receive the bread and the wine in your own home settings and um, and take it with thankfulness in your heart. During that time, we're going to be praying, playing the song, uh, The Power of the Cross. But firstly, let's come in a prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for the privilege of these holy moments. The fact We thank you for the privilege of meeting as the body of Christ to think about what Jesus did for us, bearing our sins in his body on the cross. Thank you for his obedient life, his sacrificial death, and thank you, Heavenly Father, for raising him from the dead so that we can know and have new life through his risen life. Thank you for the privilege now of coming to this place. Help us to reverence, respect these holy moments. And today I ask that you will make them significantly meaningful to us in our lives, in our homes, and in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, I invite you uh, in your own settings to take the bread, remembering it was Jesus who gave his life for you. And take the wine recognizing his blood was shed to cleanse us from sin but also to invite us into that new covenant relationship with him
Hello everyone. During this difficult and unpredictable time space we find ourselves in, it's good to think about how unchanging our loving and compassionate God is. In Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, Paul reminds us not to worry, but instead he just suggests that we pray, telling God of our needs. And then he also reminds us not to forget to thank God for his answers. Please pray to our God with me right now. Our loving God, we pray together and we acknowledge you and your unchanging love and care for us. You are sovereign in the time of this world, holding the past for us to know about the history of sin and how Jesus came and conquered it. You reach down to us today with that conquering salvation and restoration for us to accept, being your forgiveness and belief and faith in these uncertain times. You have reminded us to look at the future as we wait for the coming of Jesus to deliver us to eternity with you. Thank you, our loving Father God. You have great love for us. You forgive us our sins through Jesus. You help and heal us. You give us new life and you have compassion for each one of us. You give us your goodness and you renew us. You are our God and you rule over us and rescue us through your own Son. We do thank you and each one of us gives you praise here where we sit right now. We pray for our church. Please hold us and keep us protected. We pray that this isolation experience will not hinder your plans and purposes for us. We commit our future to you and we especially commit the upcoming meeting, introducing us all to a potential new senior pastor. We pray for your perfect will for us. We pray for clear and united confirmation of your will. We pray for all the technology and logistics to be put in place and work effectively. We have prayed and we trust in you, our God, for your leading. We thank you for all you have done and all you will do. We pray for ourselves that you will sustain us, helping us to worship and serve you in spaces outside of our building and our service time. Help us to live loving and obedient lives so we have been encouraged to do. And in the light of Jesus, the Game Changer series, help us to be Christians who honestly and openly share the gospel of your love with others. Help us to be a godly people and to use the abilities and love you give to us to serve you and others. We thank you that we are removed from these dangerous hot spots of Corona, but we continue to ask you please to help those who are not. We ask for this disease to decrease. We ask for a vaccine. We ask for wisdom for politicians, help for medical and health workers, healing for those who contract this disease and comfort for those suffering loss and even death. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will convict all people at this time in isolation, in sickness and suffering other consequences of Corona-19 to call out and know Jesus. Thank you for our continued ability to meet through technology at this time. Thank you for the skills of those who help put these services together. Please help them and give them the resources they need to help us worship you. We ask that you will return to us, return us eventually to our building. Thank you for Jeff Pepper and his leading over these past years. Please hold Jeff and Pam and bless them in their lives with your goodness and rest. Please continue to lead Jeff Freiberg in his administration and fire recovery activity and we thank you for him. Continue to help the church leaders, Bible study groups, Sunday school, youth and other groups. Keep our church active and vibrant, please Lord. Help all of our mission families and workers. Help them and hear their prayers. We stand beside them as we commit them to you. In isolation and having different experiences due to COVID, we pray for protection, for resources, for health, for resilience. And as we pray for them, we pray for us all to be bold and find the opportunities to share your love and good news with others. Thanks that there's been children at Kulamaton this week. Please reopen camp so that people to come and revitalise Camp Kulamaton to prosper and thrive. Heavenly Father, you rule over us with grace and mercy. You hear our prayers and you answer them. 
We praise you, Almighty God, through that grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and with the help of the Holy Spirit. We pray for your will to be carried out here in this space today. And we are also very grateful for your love and your rule. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks to the Fernwanans for leading us in worship this morning. My privilege to be with you to present this, uh, the final in our three series of Love Languages. It's actually going to be the final um, service that I uh, speak to you um, in this formal way as interim pastor at the start of the year. We'd actually planned um, to be away from this time. We're looking forward to uh, a break. So this week will be our final week with you. We've appreciated the privilege of being able to act in that pastoral situation over these uh, months that have passed. So this morning we're considering the topic of love languages as ways that we can consider enhancing our connections in close human relationships and we're also, also going to be using these models and methods of connections and see how they can be applied to our relationship with God. Last week uh, we considered the first two of those um, love language um, models, words of affirmation and acts of service. And today I want to take you to the uh, final three of the, of the five, quality time, physical touch and gifts. So just to bring you back up to speed or if you haven't heard of them before, here's a little um, overview of the five subject model. With loss of words We used to hide behind closed doors Or put up walls between us And oh how we misunderstood love A whole other language we'd have to learn Not always easier said than done Oh, but now we know better cause If love is a language, I'll use words If love is a gift, I'll give till it hurts Love's affection, I'll move closer to be only yours. Love is time, you have all mine. Love is to serve, I'll wait by your side. And I'll always find a way to say I love you. Understood love, a loss of affection with loss of words. We'd run and hide behind closed doors or put up walls between us. Not always easier said than done with a whole other language we have to learn and just to steer us back on course. Yeah, but now we know better cause love is a language, I'll use words. If love is a gift, I'll give till it hurts If love's affection, I'll move closer To be only yours If love is time, you have all mine if love is to serve, I'll wait by your side And I'll always find a way To say I love you more With a touch, with a gift, with a song Well, today we're going to look at those uh, three parts of the model, time, touch, and then gifts. And again, we're going to see how they can apply to our human relationships, not just those intimate ones, but any of our human relationships, as well as asking the question, do these make sense in our connection with God and his relationship with us, our relationship with him as well? 
So we start off with the time one, but I think it's important that we actually call it quality time rather than just time. Because we're going to see for a start from Jesus' interaction with his disciples that yes, he spent time with them, but more importantly, he deliberately spent quality time with them. Jesus lived with his disciples for three years. For three years, they were able uh, to be together. They worked together. They shared quarters together quite often. They slept eight um, in the same units as well. They put up with each other's smelly sandals and all of those sorts of things. But more importantly, they enjoyed quality time together apart from the pressing crowds. It was during such times as those quality times that Jesus alone with his disciples, privately shared the meaning of the various things he was teaching to the crowds. The parable of the sower of the seed is one of those. There was some um, occasion there in Mark chapter 4 where he told the story of the parable of the sower, but then privately to his own disciples, he explained everything to them. Mark 4, 10 and 11. And Jesus said, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. So we must realise that Jesus delighted and deliberately spent time, quality time, with those close to him. I shared with you a couple of weeks ago in our last communion service um, those insights regarding the way Jesus made uh, deliberately organised the place and the setting of that last meal, the last supper with his disciples, so that they could be together, so that they could have quality, uninterrupted time at that significant meal. One time when Jesus um, and his disciples were passing through Galilee, Jesus didn't want anyone to know what he was um, um, teaching to his disciples about his death and resurrection. So Jesus carefully guarded the quality time with those closest to him. You'll find that referred to in Mark chapter 9. Another time where um, in the story of the transfiguration, Jesus took with him James and Peter and John um, and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. And when Jesus was transfigured on that mountain type, that was a time that he shared just with those three disciples. You can read the rest of that story in Matthew chapter uh, 17, um, 1 to 9. Not long before he would be taken away by the authorities and killed, Jesus gathered his disciples together. And we've already talked about the way they ate, they talked, and they had that first communion and they sung hymns and prayed together. But during that last week, as we considered um, Jesus' loving acts of service last week in our, um, our sermon together from the book of John, we see that Jesus not only gathered his disciples together in that upper room and talked with them about what was going to happen to him and shared that um, last supper with them, but we remember that he also washed his disciples' feet. In fact, in the book of John, five chapters are devoted to this quality time Jesus invested in his uh, disciples before the crucifixion. But Jesus just didn't spend quality time with his disciples. He didn't drag them aside and say, you're the only ones that are important. He also, we read in um, the scriptures, reclined at a table with tax collectors and sinners. And the Pharisees complained about the quality time Jesus spent with those they considered undesirable in the crowd. Luke chapter 5 and verses 29 and 30. So as I've thought about each of the love languages, I've found that most of them have been able to be applied to God and our relationship with him. And the language of quality time is no exception to that. We need to be able to spend quality time with God. We need to choose to do that and find some deliberate ways of making that happen. Some of the ways in which you're able to um, do this is through Bible study or meditation or prayer, or personal worship, or even just walking and talking with Jesus as well. When we spend time with someone, we get to know them better, and they get to know us better as well. And what we learn from that time together helps us relate better, more appropriately with that other person as well. So is this an important love language to recognise in our human relationships? It certainly is. 
is an important love language to recognise and to try and live out in our relationship with, um, with Jesus as well. It certainly is. Just two things I want to um, leave with you about uh, um, quality time as a uh, relationship. The first thing is we not, need not only spend that time, but we really need to be present in that time. We need to practice that active engagement to make sure that the other person knows that we actually enjoy and are investing in them through that time. If you're having a conversation with someone, make sure you actually turn up. Make sure they know that you're listening, listening actively. You know, the old thing of making eye contact or answering some of the questions or even just a simple nod. Showing empathy and engagement is rather important if it's quality time, not just time. The other thing that maybe we don't so often think about is plan the next time. There is little more encouraging to a person who values your presence with them than knowing that you are and you want to commit to doing it again. Hey, can we meet together next week and have another chat together? I so enjoyed being with you today. What can be another way that we can make that happen? How can we make this time together more enjoyable next time? What ways can we contribute together to make this time quality time? Quality time in a time poor era is a great investment and a most significant commitment. It is a powerful language that is, I reckon, really important for us not only to consider not only to say, oh yes, I can see how they can do that well, but it's one for us to practice as well. One for us to make as a primary connection with people around us. Well, we're going to move on from quality time now to physical touch. Some of these languages, I'm sure you'll agree, have common ground. Most don't occur in isolation. We can't have... Um, physical touch or um, embracing somebody or without actually spending time with them, it's probably fairly impossible. Words of affirmation often happen um, when spending time with someone as well. Acts of service can never, must never be confused with quality time though. They aren't the same things, but even though they can occur in the same uh, scenario. Physical touch, I suppose, hardly needs explaining. But it's such an important aspect of uh, relationship and relational connection that we must actually men mention a few things. Now I'm actually going to start with a negative. Um, the words that Aileen Zhu um, mentioned last week in the introductory video to these five languages on this particular physical touch was, I think, a great reminder to us. She gave some suggestions about simple practices of connecting um, with people through touch. But she also gave us a reminder that neglect and abuse are unforgettable and unforgivable to these type of people. So a, a person can feel neglected if we um, don't find an appropriate way to connect with them at that physical level. It was probably helpful to consider the negative consequences um, of ignoring this la love language for, for people as well. It is probably important to touch on the importance of um, this inappropriate message too, being sent by even breaching the godly boundaries of this language. I think more than any other language, there is a potential to send the wrong or unintentional or a mixed message with this uh, language of physical touch. This is probably the language that um, connects both the physical and the emotional states of our being together most of all. So we need to know what is appropriate for us, but what is also permissible and appropriate and acceptable to the other person as well. It's no good um, slapping somebody on the back if that's an awkward moment for them. So we need to be invited into a space and know that what we're actually offering is mutually acceptable in that area of physical touch. But what about physical touch and connection with God? In um, the Gospels we read, as Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. 
but no one could heal her. And she came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. And when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing around against you. But Jesus said, No, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. I think this was one example of Jesus being touched by or having that physical connection with somebody as well. And I, friends, I think there is a real sense that God strives and invites us to know him in ways where we can be touched by him and we can also touch his heart, where we can know his power and our provisions. And in that sense, like that lady who touched Jesus, God can be touched by our needs and our desire to have that connection with him as well. There's another beautiful example in um, in the scriptures as well, Mark chapter 10. It's a very well-known one from Sunday school era, but it's about Jesus inviting children to come to him. Let me read some of those verses to you there. Mark chapter 10. And they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But Jesus saw it. He was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them and blessed them. Friends, this is not only just a wonderful reminder of how precious children are in God's sight, but a wonderful example of the caring nature and the connecting nature of Jesus with his children, no matter what age they are. Touching God's heart, him, him touching our lives, both ways that we are reminded um, and entitled to understand, to believe that God wants us to have a tangible, a real ways, a real life connection with him. So have a think about that in your relationship with God. What are some ways that you can touch the heart of God? What are some ways that you want God to reach out and be physically present in your life, in your work world, even in your relationships as well? Going on to um, the last of um, our five gifts now, moving from quality time through to physical touch and now on to gifts. And I'm not going to say much here at all um, because we all know what gifts are and we probably know how we use them and we probably, if we think carefully, know how they should be used as well. But can I just say, be careful not to abuse this gift of gifts. It's probably the go-to language for all of us if we're trying to connect with someone. Um, I'm not so good at this, but, uh, you know, we go to flowers on special occasions. Chocolate seem good as well. Um, even gift vouchers can work with some blokes as long as they're G BCF or something like that. But gifts are so prevalent in our society today that sometimes they're just the go-to thing that doesn't have a deep connection with them. Let's make sure that the gift we choose to give to somebody is appropriate and acceptable to them as well. I suppose the other thing that I'd like to say about gifts, make sure that it's the appropriate one as well. An unopened present alongside a forlorn figure saying, all I want from you is to have you here sitting with me is a really um, sober reminder that gifts are not always the way to make a connection with a person, or as we say, a way to a person's heart. So let's consider how we use gifts, what sort of gifts we offer to someone else, and how we even receive gifts, thinking about the intent and the connection that somebody's trying to make from behind them as well. But what about God? Does God act in this sphere of gift giving or gift receiving as well? I think it's certainly true. God's greatest gift, of course, is Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Certainly he offers us the best gift in the world. But also 
scripture shows us in many places that he desires gifts from us as well. Reminded back there in the Old Testament in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 24, these words, but the king replied to Arono, no, I insist on buying it for I will not offer um, a present of burnt offerings to the Lord, my God, that has cost me nothing. So David paid him 50 pieces of silver um, and um, bought the gift that he then talk, took and offered as a sacrifice to God. God delights in us giving him things, gifts from our lives, gifts from us, our service, even gifts from our pocket. But in those words of David, I will not offer to the Lord something that has cost me nothing. Let's consider the way that we connect with our God through gifts as well. So quality time, physical touch and gifts are the three things we've looked at this week as we've brought these five gift languages um, to a close. And I just want to close by focusing on God. There's that beautiful verse that says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And we're just going to close with a video that spells that out, that reinforces that, and that reminds us of God's indescribable gift. Thanks for being part of this series and thanks for the way you've um, connected with us in this time together. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift.
for joining us today online. And thank you so much to all those who help to screen our service so we can worship God together. Thanks, Jeff, for your presentation of the love languages and how we can use them to share with each other and also to God. God himself does not just love, but in fact is love. And Jeff explained to us that to love God is to obey Jesus. Jesus told us in Mark chapter 12 and verse 30 to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself. Can we please close in prayer? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your great love for us. Help us to love you with all that we are and in all that we do. Help us as a church to love, especially in this time of isolation. We praise and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week and stay safe. And it just makes me laugh. Take nine. I love you, Mum. <laughs> <laughs>